What an absolute honor it is to be here. I see some new faces I didn't see at the conference, so if you don't know who I am, I'm Caleb Moran, and I am honored to be a part of this vision here. How many love this church? Aren't you glad we're not in lockdown and quarantine and COVID and all of that? You know, church is essential. Church is something that we need. Relationships are key, and your pastors are important. Amen. We need the voice of our pastors in our lives. We need the voice of God in our lives. And so I've just been so blessed to not only be here, but to just see what God's doing in this church. This is not something that just happened overnight. I mean, this is decades and decades and decades of work. And so if you just joined this church, you joined something that has been waiting for you for years. And your future is here. So continue to, man, this, should be, this shouldn't be the best kept secret, right? This should be something you're shouting from the rooftops or the cornfields, whatever you want to you call it, right? Amen. So invite some people. If you see empty seats next to you, determine you're going to fill those seats that are next to you because that will fill people's lives. Amen? Amen. Well, this morning I've got a message for you I believe is going to bless you. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the ninth chapter of Matthew. This morning I want to discuss the subject of faith and how it can change your situation. You know, I think sometimes we think that our situation changes when God gets up and does something about it, right? Sometimes we look at God like, God, when are you going to do something about this situation? And I promise you, God is not sitting idle. God is not confused on how to fix your life. God is not confused on how to move in your direction. God's not confused on how to fix your spouse, your child, uh, your finances, your health, your situation, your career. God knows all, is all, does all, can be all, but change doesn't just come from him. You understand that? We have a part to play in the condition of our lives. We have a part to play in the direction of our lives. And so sometimes we, we sit back and wait for God, but how many of you know God is sometimes sitting back and waiting for us? I want to preach a message to you today entitled, Become What You Believe. If you're a note taker, I just helped you out right there. You're trying to figure out what's the title of today's sermon. That, that's what it's going to be. You know, we've all had ideas of what we want to be in life. I know when I was a kid, I had many things I wanted to be, and this was not one of them. I think my earliest memory of what I wanted to be was a pizza maker, right? You ever seen those guys throwing dough in the air? I mean, I'm like, how do you do that? I mean, it's like magic, you know? I just, I thought if I could, if I could reach that, if I could get to that point, I had arrived, right? Well, now I'm married with five kids, and I can tell you that would not be the salary they gave my wife or my kids the lifestyle they wanted. And if you're a pizza maker, hey, let me know where you are, and I'll come eat lunch there today, right? I remember at some point I wanted to be an astronaut, right? I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be an archaeologist, right? There, there was all these, these ideas that I had. I, at one point, I wanted to be a professional boxer, right? And then, then I wanted to be a professional baseball player, so I had all of these ideas, but how many of you know, just because something's cool doesn't mean you're going to become it? How many of you, if you're honest, are actually doing the thing that you wanted to do as a child? A few of you. Okay, well, way, way to go. I'm go ahead. How many of you, you're, you had something way different planned as a kid than what you're doing right now? The majority of you. See? Now, you've got to do something, right? If you want to be an astronaut, that just happened. No one just wakes up and they're in a spaceship, right? If so, something weird happened the night before and you need to figure out what went down, right? But if you just wake up and it happens, it would be so much easier for us. But there's a part we have to play. There's action that we have to take. If you want to be a brain surgeon, you got to go to school. You want to be a carpenter, you got to pick up a tool, right? You want to be a pastor, you got to get in the word. You've got to have that call. You've got to walk those things out. And so in the Bible, we're going to see a, a story of two men who no longer desired to be who they were. Have you ever been sick and tired of being sick and tired? It's like, man, I'm done with this. I'm done with how I feel. I'm done with what I see. I'm done with what we're dealing with. I'm done with this. It doesn't mean you have to quit it, but you have to change it. 
right? If you want true change, faith is a great change agent. Faith can change anything. In the Bible, there's so many scriptures about faith. Now, the whole Bible is not about faith, right? But the whole Bible has the ability to produce faith. And so faith is not just a subject that we teach on. Faith is how we as Christians are called and equipped to live. And so when you look at the things in which you wanted to be one day, again, it's not the things you think that are cool that come up for you in life. It's the things you actually get up and pursue. Well, in Matthew chapter 9, two men decided they didn't want to be what they were any longer. They wanted to become something else. Go with me to verse 27. It says, and when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Now back up for just a second. I want to point out some things to you because I don't believe the words in the Bible are just, you know, what can we throw in there to make this story more, you know, you know, salty, right? Add some salt and some spice and let's just, let's just add some things to make this story come alive. I don't think that's how it works. They're telling us certain things for a reason, right? It says two blind men followed him. They followed him. Now think about it. Two people who couldn't see <laughs> follow Jesus. Now as a pastor, I've had problems getting people who have 20-20 vision, to follow Jesus. Two people who are blind, who have no sight, are following Jesus. Not only that, it says in the next verse, when he came into the house, the blind men came to him. So Jesus walks into a house, which means they walk into a house, and they walk right up to him. Have you ever had the lights turn out in your house? You ever had the lights turn out in a house that wasn't yours? A room you weren't familiar with, you're like, oh my God, you know, you're kind of, you're feeling around. If it's your house, you're like, I know exactly where to go, right over here, I'm stepping over this, you know. You, you know everything. Why? You've been there, you're familiar with it, you've seen it. These guys haven't seen anything. And yet, they're following Jesus into a place that's unfamiliar, but yet they're still determined. That's pursuit, are you pursuing God that way this morning? What about in the areas that you want change? Are you willing to follow him into unfamiliar places? Into things and situations and environments that you don't recognize? But to say, if you're there, I'll be there. Right? If the healer's there, I'm going to him. If peace is there, I'm going to peace. I'm following him out of my comfort zone. Even if, I wonder if people were telling him, hey, sir, hey, don't, don't come in here. You know, because usually in those times, blind men or beggars had certain clothes, the clothing they wore, right? So people recognized these two men were walking towards Jesus, following him. But they cried out to him, and Jesus said this to them. He said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? I find that to be a unique statement because you know they followed him because they knew who he was. He knew they knew who he was, but he was checking up on something. He was checking up on their faith. And it says in verse 29, he touched their eyes and he said this. He said, I am Jesus all powerful and everything I touch is healed. No. No. He said, according to your faith, then let it be to you. If the thing you were believing for today was 100% contingent on your faith, do you think you'd get it? Do you think that marriage could be turned around, that wayward child could come home? Do you think that doctor's diagnosis could be reversed? Do you, do you think your career could change, your finances could change if it was just dependent on your faith alone? Or are we of the mindset that we can just sit back and if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me? See, people say things like that a lot, like, well, God knows what I need. It's true, but he says, before you ask. <laughs> he knows what you have need of before you ask. The key is you need to ask, right? 
He is a good God, but he's made it contingent on our cooperation. He's not going to force you to serve him, nor is he going to force his blessing upon you. Right? We have a part to play. Romans 1 tells us the just shall live by faith. Just means justified. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you've been justified freely, and now you're to live by faith, not by miracles. God wants you to walk this thing out by faith. And so it says that Jesus touched him. He said, according to your faith, let it be unto you. And verse 30 says, and their eyes were open. So again, notice that they followed Jesus. They pursued him. I think too many times we sit still wondering when God's going to do something about our situation. But they actually pursued the one who had the answer. So if you're taking notes, write this down. What you pursue will pursue you. Some of you have what you have in life because you've been going after it. You pursue fear, you'll have fear. You pursue anger, you'll have anger. You pursue strife, you will have strife. You ever tried to go and fix a situation in a relationship, but you just come at it full of anger? And guess what you leave? You leave even more angry. Oh, I'm going to tell them what we're going to do about this situation. And you get in there and you leave. I can't believe they said that to me. You know, and now, now nothing changed. The only thing that happened was it stayed the same and it's going to be prolonged for change until you do something different. So what you pursue will, in fact, pursue you. They pursued the one with the answer and the one with the answer pursued back. I can prove it scripturally in just a minute that when we come to God a certain way, he comes to us a certain way. See, when you come to God and you say things like, God, if it be your will, we talked about this in the this weekend, all you're doing is, is letting him know you don't know his will. Well, God, if it be your will, I mean, I'd really like to, really like some help in this situation. But, you know, if you don't want me to have it, you know, don't get it. It's, it's kind of like a she loves me, she loves me not type thing, you know, like maybe he will, maybe, hey, at least you got a 50-50 chance, right? I can tell you, though, if you come to God with anything but faith, don't expect to leave with the reward. It's just how it is. God's not a mean God. He's a good God. He's dealt to every man a measure of faith. He gave all of us the faith by which we can come to him, by which we can move mountains, by which we can see blind eyes open, right? By which we can get the things and the promises that God has for us. And so the Bible says that they pursued him and he pursued back. The first thing Jesus said was not about his ability and his power, but about their belief in his ability and his power. God is not interested in his ability. He's interested in do you believe in his ability. God knows what he can do. He's not having to prove himself to anyone. His coming into your life and and helping you out is not so he can show you he has power. Right? He knows he has power. It's so that you can see that my faith has touched heaven today, and as a result, my life now resembles heaven. Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe on earth should look like heaven. We should live in a heaven-like state even before we get there. That's God's plan for you. Is it always going to be sunshine and rainbows? No. That's why you got faith. Is it always going to be the perfect opportunity to just raise your hands and worship God? No. That's why you have faith. Are you always going to feel like, like you know, uh, today I'm, I'm a Holy Ghost filled, saved, sanctified, justified man of God. And, and every step I take possesses ground and, and God is for me. And, and if he's for me, who can be against me? No, sometimes you're going to wake up and go, man, my hip hurts. <laughs> man, man, I'm tired. I don't think I want to do this. Man, I'm frustrated. I don't think I want to go see the in-laws today, right? It's, it's like you, you had all these different scenarios, but you know what? You just got to do it. You just have to do it. Why? Because you're living by faith. Amen. And so what you pursue will pursue you. Let's look at the message translation of this and shine some more light on it. Verse 28, it says, do you really believe I can do this? This is what Jesus said. How, how would you have that conversation with him? Like if Jesus said, do you really believe I can do this? I mean, well, yeah, I'm blind. I've been following you, right? 
followed you, followed you into a house. But he really wants to know. Not only does he want, want to know, he wants to hear. Faith is, is, is vocal, right? You've got to speak some things out. Because, yeah, you can say, well, yeah, I, I, I know that God can do it. But have you said it? Have you said it? See, if, if you are married in here, you know you like it when your spouse says, I love you, right? But, but if you just didn't go through life saying, I love you, and just said, well, I mean, surely they know I love them. I mean, my God, I married them. You know, my daughter probably hears I love you from me a thousand times a day. I just can't say it enough. I'm like addicted to her presence. I want to be around my daughter always. I'm like, listen, you're never getting married. You and me are getting a house together, and we're living with each other forever. I mean, I love this little girl, right? I just performed a wedding like a week ago, and I'm watching someone else's daughter dance with their father, and I'm crying, and I'm like, this is going to be me one day, and I don't want this. You know, you're never getting married. But you know, she knows I love her, not because I think it. She don't know my thoughts. She knows I love her because I tell her. Your belief in God is not just an internal thought, but it should be a spoken word that, God, I believe you in this situation. My mind might be confused. My thoughts might be tainted, right? I might have a little bit of fear present right now, but one thing I do know is I, I, I believe in you. I love you, God. People ask me often, like, hey, what are you going to do? Man, I, I may not know what to do, but one thing I do know, God's faithful. I may not know what's going to happen in this situation, but one thing I do know, God is faithful. And it, it, it does something in our lives to say those things. It says, Jesus said, do you really believe? And they said, why, Master, yes, we believe. And in verse 29, it says, he touched their eyes and he said, then become what you believe. Wow, you mean to tell me we have the power? We've been given the option by Jesus himself to become what we believe? Now, had they come to him and said, well, I believe I'm a blind man. I've been blind from birth and all I'll ever be is blind. I've never seen anything. Then he would go, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have faith for this. How many times have we actually become what it is that we believe? I can go out on a limb here and say today, you actually are what you believe. So are you pleased with what you are? Are you pleased with what that relationship is or how that relationship is? I remember one day I was talking to one of my kids and I was like, you just don't listen to me. <laughs> Parents, you ever said that? Like, why? It's like, it's like you and me, like, we just, we don't make sense, you know. And my son looked at me, he said, Dad, that's what you believe. And I was like, so you mean it's really not that way, dude? He's like, no, Dad, I'm cool with you. That's just what you think. And, I, and when he walked out the room, my wife goes, I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> and in my brain, I really thought, like, man, we, we got issues, but that was in my brain, and it was coming out of my mouth, so it became my reality. Your reality is not God's reality. God sees you much different than the way you see you. God sees your circumstance, your situation, your whole outcome much different than the way you see it. So what you've got to begin to do is to get rid of the natural eyes and begin to see through the eyes of faith. Paul said in Ephesians 1 that my, my inner man, right, that these eyes would be flooded with light. There's an internal set of eyes that sees different. There's an internal set of ears that hears different. You've got something on the inside of you that doesn't just act the way that everything else acts in the natural realm. You know, we say things like, you know, get real, you know. Get back to a reality. We don't have to get real or get back to anybody's reality. We've got to look, to look at God's word, use our faith, and keep stepping into the promises he's given us. Because listen, I don't care how old you are, you have not reached the point that he has for you. There's more and more and more available. 
So again, we don't become what God believes about us. We become what we believe about ourselves. Sure, God believes in his own ability, but do you? Do you really believe he can do it for you? Better question, do you believe he wants to do it for you? Remember the man that was by the pool and he was like, man, do you want this? And he's like, do I want to? I teach you not know who I am. I mean, that's the whole reason why I'm here. The whole reason why I'm here. People pray to God for provision. He is provision. He is provision. They pray to him for healing. He is the healer. The thing in which you need is the identity in which he has. So when you're in the presence of God, you're in the presence of provision. You're in the presence of resurrection. You're in the presence of joy, in the presence of love. That's just who he is, right? If I had issues with my computer and Bill Gates is my uncle, why would I go to Best Buy, right? I mean, he, he is the computer. He created it, right? And sometimes we go to him wondering if he even has the ability to figure out our situation. He created you. He created everything. Listen, when, when your appliance or car or tool or whatever is not operating the right way, what do you look for? A manufacturer's warranty. What do you do? Do you get on Google and start studying how to, how to build a, a, you know, a, a, a power tool or you start, how do I build a, a vacuum cleaner? No, you don't care about any of that. Somebody else already did it, the one who created it. You just take it back to them. If the manufacturer who created it can't fix it, you got issues. Let me tell you something. You have a manufacturer's warranty on your life. When things aren't working out right, when things aren't making sense, just take it back to the one who created it. God, my marriage isn't making sense right now. God, my family's not making sense right now. My health, my body's not operating the way it should. Doctors are telling me things. God, you created this body. You can fix this body. God, we entered into marriage together with you so you can fix this marriage. God, you created my children. You can fix them, and please do it quickly, (laughs) right? Do it quickly. If not, I'm going to intervene and do it my way, right? And so do you really believe that he can do whatever it is that you're needing him to do? I love what Kenneth Hagin said. He said, people get what they believe for in life, nothing more, nothing less. That's it. You know, back in the day in church when people would come down to the altar and they would pray, you know, here he was the pastor of the church and everyone's down here kneeling and they're praying and he would just walk around and tap people on the shoulder and say, hey, what do you believe in God for? And they go, nothing in particular. And he'd go, well, then that's just what you're going to get. You know, they're like, what? What did he just say? You know? The church is not just a culture. It's not just a, a motion of things we do. We don't just, well, we stand up, we sit down, we lift our hands, we give money, we do this, we take communion, you know, we we go down to the front, we, we go out in the lobby, we get coffee, we go home. It's not a list of cultural things. It's a relationship. You understand? Whether you drink coffee or not, that's not church. You understand? It's a relationship. And no matter what level you are in that relationship, you're required to live it by faith. You're required to use faith. The currency of heaven is faith, right? If you want to go down to Target, you'll have Target here? I'm sure you do. Yeah, well, anyway. If you want to go down to some big store and buy a TV, look, you can't go in there today here in the United States and and just pull, you know, a handful of pesos out. It's currency, but it's not this currency. Not only that, if that TV is $1,000, and it says on the, on the ticket, it takes U.S. currency. And I go up there and I throw that TV up there and I reach in my pocket and I throw out a, a handful of change and go, there's U.S. currency. I like to take my TV. They're going to go, no, it's U.S. currency, but you don't have enough of it. It's not that they're denying me the purchase. It says sometimes I've got to grow in that currency to be able to receive that item. You understand that? And so God gave you the faith to start with, but we can grow in it. We can keep going from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Amen. 
And so turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read some things to you because the blind men didn't just believe that he had the power to heal them. They actually believed that they would see. See the difference there? They weren't just going, you know, I heard about this guy named Jesus, and if we go there, you know, maybe he'll heal us. No, they believed they would see. They knew when I leave from that time with him, I will have a totally new life, a change. My vision will be there, right? And so that's a big difference in just believing that Jesus can. So faith is a confidence that what you believe is actually yours. It's a confidence. How many of you are confident that the things the word of God has spoken to you, you actually have them? I'm confident. I was watching this, this interview the other day. It was an old interview with Arsenio Hall and uh, Little Richard, is that his name? L- little Richie? There you go. Either way, Little Richie. Some little guy they used to sing. And here's little Richie, and he's just, he's just bragging of how, you know, I, I'm, I'm so handsome, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so attractive. You know, he's talking about how, how beautiful he is, you know, and everyone's just laughing. And uh, he said, my mom, my mom would always tell me, boy, you got to quit, you got to quit being arrogant. And he said, people think that I'm arrogant. He said, or I'm conceited. He goes, I'm not conceited. I'm convinced, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And I started laughing so hard. I thought, that's how we need to be as children of God. Because the world will hear faith as arrogance. It's not arrogance, it's confidence. I'm confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in me is faithful and will bring it forth into a day of completion. Well, how do you know? I'm confident. Well, how can you be confident? I mean, I'm just confident. I'm confident. There's things in my life when my son was diagnosed with cancer. I wasn't like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? I'm confident we will walk out of this hospital changed, changed. When the phone rings at the middle of the night and it's not the the news you want to hear, are you scared and confident in the fear or are you peaceful and confident in your faith? God has something for you. And so what you believe becomes your identity. Jesus said, then become what you believe. Jesus told them that their answer, that the answer that they wanted was dependent entirely on their faith. Are you confident, again, I'll ask you, are you confident of the things in which you desire of God could come solely by your faith right now? If not, then I would encourage you to get confident. How do you get confident? You get in his word. You read it enough that it makes sense. You know, if you're being falsely accused and you found in, in, a, in a, a law book that you could actually use this, this thing right here, this chapter or this, this phrase in that book to plead your case and win, you'd be confident because it's the law, right? The word of God is a law set in motion. Faith gets rewarded. Hebrews eleven six 6 says so. It says, but without faith... It's impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe, there's the belief part, that he is and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So what's the key in coming to God? He says, well, first you got to believe. Don't come to God with, you know, (laughs) she loves me, she loves me not, faith. Don't come to God with if it be your will, faith. Come to God with God. Man, I was looking in your word today. Whoo! I came across 1 Peter 2, 24. Now help me out, God. It says that by Jesus' stripes I was healed. Now, if you're not a man that you would lie, and you wrote it right here, and this word is, is like you speaking to me, then according to this, what the doctor said about my body is not what I have to believe. Now, I'm not denying that I may have symptoms or I may have a sickness. But what I am also not denying is that your word trumps all of that. So, God, I'm coming to you today with this right here. I believe you're God. And if you're God and I come to you by faith, then your word says that I'll be rewarded. 
So God, I thank you. I walk away from this with the reward of everlasting life, but I also have healing in my body. And God, I just thank you right now that my body is healed. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. And if I was healed, then I am healed. And if I am healed, then I'm going to talk like I'm healed. I'm going to walk like I'm healed. I'm going to think like I'm healed. I'm not going to go around and cry around and have people pat me and shasha me on the back. That's a Cajun term, shasha. I'm not going to have them do that to me. What I'm going to do when people want to give me pity, I'm going to say, oh, no, 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 no. Don't feel sorry for me because I already found out I'm, I'm done with this. I'm healed. And whether they call you crazy or not, who are you following, man's opinion or the healer? I guarantee you people told those two men, shh, Jesus don't want, want that right now. He's coming into a house to relax. No, Jesus turned and he said, hey, I just want to know one thing. Do you believe? Then become what you believe. Your belief creates your identity. It creates who you are. Your belief about your body, your belief about your situation, your belief about your marriage, your belief about your future, it creates what you're going to see. It creates the environment in which you live in. And so he said, he who comes to God must believe. The first thing Jesus asked the blind men was if they believed. So your reward is waiting on your response to that question. Do you believe? Look at what the message translation says. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe. Both that he exists, and listen to this. Ah, I love this. This is so cool. This is just the nature of who he is. You're not serving some God that's just like, sure, I'll give that to you. Okay, you did good last week. Look what it says. He cares enough to respond to those who seek him. You ever seen those like famous people, celebrities, they're walking down the street and paparazzi's yelling her name like, Justin, Justin Bieber, you know, Justin, Justin, is it true? And they're just saying all this stuff and they're trying to get a rise out of him, right? And then you're like, man, you know, at first I was like, you know, why, why doesn't Justin just turn around and talk to these guys? Right, you got fans, hey, over here, Justin, I bought your new album. You know, he just ignores them and just walks on by. I wonder if that's how people felt like Jesus was going to be. Jesus, hey, hey, do you know me? No, you don't know me? Okay, hey, Jesus, I heard about you. But, you know, he stopped and goes, wait a second, someone knows me? Talk to me. What's your name? Oh, I'm I'm blind man number one. This is my friend, blind man number two. (laughs) Oh, where are you guys from? Tell me, what's going on? Jesus, we're blind. I see that. Well, we heard about you. Would you believe I could do something about that? Yeah. Then, man, I mean, just hearing the tone of faith in your voice, that's all you need. It's already done. Become what you believe. It wasn't a, all right, get the ushers. Somebody give me some oil. You know, it, it, was, it was not that any of that's bad. But it was just simply, hey, all that's required in this ingredient is faith. And you've got it. So, hey, guys, have fun seeing. There's a lot of great colors out here. And he just <laughs> takes off. It is just that simple. If you really do just believe that he is that powerful. It's the confidence in who he is. Jesus cared enough about the blind men to respond to their faith, which means every step of faith is a step towards your reward. If you truly believe in God and you're taking that step of faith, that's all it takes. I've talked to people before, and it's like you just know, like, man, they're just on the verge of giving up. And then they'll say, well, pastor, I got up this morning and I thanked God and I said, hey, hey, come on. Let's rejoice in that. You're doing good. Well, Pastor, I don't feel good. We don't care how you feel. He don't care how you feel. How you feel doesn't change the situation. Well, Pastor, what should I do? Just keep thanking God. Well, Pastor, I thanked him this, this afternoon during lunch. Hey, man, <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Just keep thanking him. Well, Pastor, last night I got joined hands with my wife, and we just prayed and thanked God. I don't see any change yet. That's okay. You're taking steps. 
eventually those little small steps turn into great strides. And now they're like, Pastor, you'll never believe. Things are turning around. I, I have joy in my life. Not only that, man, it's like, it's like I have hope. I mean, and I was just dealing with this one situation, but it's like it's fixing all these situations I never knew about. I remember one time I went to the doctor. I was having an issue with my shoulder, and they gave me this uh, shot. Well, I didn't tell the doctor. I was also having an issue with some breathing issues. And so they gave me this shot to fix my shoulder, and it fixed it, but, like, it fixed my breathing. And I was like, whoa, what would you do? You fixed my breathing. They're like, you have breathing issues? I'm like, well, I didn't want to tell you all that. I just want to tell you about my shoulder. I came here for my shoulder. I'm like, but whatever you gave me, it fixed that and this. It's amazing. Like, give me some more shots. You know, like, what else can we fix? You know, I don't know. That's kind of how faith is. It's like you step out and you use it for one area, but you realize, man, it covers everything. And all you were wanting was that problem between you and so-and-so to work. But when God saw your faith, he began to work on your joy. He began to work on other things. He began to restore relationships, and you began to get promotions, and the favor of God was surrounding you. It's just, it's just how it works. We must believe. You must believe. And you must believe that he is, and through that belief, he is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. You can come to him and know that, God, if I come to you by faith, I am not leaving empty-handed. I'm confident. I'm confident. First John, it says in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, that this is the confidence I have in him. That if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. Well, here we know that he hears us and he responds to us. He cares enough to respond. He hears me, and if he hears me, it says, he gives me the things in which I ask him. So are you willing to get up from your situation and head towards the one who has the answer? Only you know what your situation is. Only you know what you're dealing with, but will you pursue by faith the promise that awaits you? It's not enough just to sit back and go, well, God knows what I need, and I'm putting it in his hands. Listen, Jesus Take the Wheel is a great song. <laughs> but he's going to put your hands back on it and say, I gave you power and authority and ability I gave you faith. I gave you my own spirit. I gave you the things to lead and guide you. So don't take your hands off and just assume I'm jumping in and going to take, take control. And I'm not telling you God won't help you out. I'm just saying God's help also comes from the things he's given us, the helper, the greater one that lives on the inside of us. And sometimes when we don't know how to pray, he intercedes for us. He comes alongside us. He helps. Our faith needs to be stirred up even in the midst of fear. And so you have to believe in the power of Jesus. And church, today I want to encourage you to become what you believe. Can I pray for you this morning? Father, this morning I come to you on behalf of your word. Your word is so powerful. It's stronger than anything we're facing. And God, I thank you that in this room right now are individuals, maybe even those that may be watching online or listening to this message. There's individuals in here today that are tired of being who they are. God, I remember when that was me. I was a drug addict, addicted to drugs and didn't know how to get, get free. I, didn't, I had no clue how to break that addiction. I had so much hurt in my life, so much pain in my life. When I lost my brother to a vehicle accident, I didn't know how I could deal with those emotions at such a young age. I remember coming to you, God, and telling you I'm sick and tired of being this person. And I remember asking you to come into my life. I believe that you were more than enough for my situation and for my needs. And God, if you could change me and deliver me and restore me, God, I know you can do it to those that are here today. No matter where you are in your relationship with him this morning, I can tell you this. 
He loves you and he cares enough about you to respond. This morning, if you need to give your life to him, maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You don't know if you left here today, if you would, if you'd have died, if you'd go to heaven or not, today you can know that. And if that's you, we want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, just raise your hand. Anybody at all, you say, that's me. I need to give my life to Christ. I take it everyone in here is saved. Then this is where I want to transition. If this morning you say, today, I do want to give my life to Christ, but I want to give it to him in a way that I leave changed. This is not a salvation call. This is a transformation call. You're tired of living the way you've been living. That situation, that circumstance, that relationship. And all I'm saying is that you say today, I want to come to God with faith and by faith and believe he's turning it around. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's that business you started. Maybe it's that ministry. Maybe it's a child. Maybe one of your children aren't serving God. They used to, but they're not anymore. Maybe one of your children is going through something or there's a diagnosis that you don't, you don't agree with and you don't want to have as your identity. If that's you today and you say, I'm coming to God by faith and I'm believing him, I just want you to raise your hand. Come on, hands are going up all around this place. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I speak that they become what they believe. Father, right now, you see their hand as a sign of pursuit that God they come to you and they leave rewarded because you are the rewarder in Jesus mighty name we pray amen let's welcome your pastor as he comes back